Maverick Mustangs of the Salt River with Craig C. Downer of the Wild Horse Conspiracy and Tom Porter of Animal Consciousness. Horses have an evolutionary heritage in North America. They have an ancestral right to peace and freedom. Unfortunately, the U.S. and Canadian governments have decimated many large herds of wild horses throughout the West. Looking at the Colorado River here, it's a, a major supplier of life to so many communities throughout the West. We're really pleased to be here, safe and sound in this beautiful state of Arizona. And looking forward to discovering its great treasures and to help the, the wild horses that are such an integral and beautiful part of Arizona. The Salt River joins the Verde River. This is an, the area where the Forest Service wants to get rid of wild horses. <laughs> We're trying to bring justice to the wild horses and uh, stop this trend to, uh, which is particularly grievous uh, by the U.S. Forest Service to eliminate its wild horses and burros when they should be protecting, preserving them uh, and their wild, free-roaming uh, natural lifestyle. After all, they are return natives here and they restore the ecosystem in so many ways and bring balance to the ecosystem. We're in the Tonto National Forest and the Forest Service is one of the two agencies, along with BLM, charged with preserving and protecting as well as managing our wild horses and burros. <coughs> Mankind must learn to share the land and freedom and bury life itself with such magnificent animals as uh, some beautiful beings, highly evolved beings as the horses. I was very encouraged to see that due to public outcry, this Tonto National Forest that we're in, in in now, its officials want, we're, want, we're going to eliminate the last few wild horses down here at the lower end of the Salt River. And due to public outcry, uh, they, uh, they uh, back down. So I, I'm very encouraged that we can get a program that restores these horses in their rightful uh, areas here in this beautiful part of our nation. The public has to be really on top of this because um, they, they, the wild horses are targeted. <laughs> They're part of our quality of life here, here on Earth and just everything that's right about, about them being here. build the soil to a greater degree than the ruminants and they seed a lot more intact seeds from a greater variety of plants which go on to spring up. They cause a greater biodiversity of, uh, of species, of plants and animals, consequently of animals too, and they build rich soils and that's very important here in the desert. They do not as thoroughly digest what they ingest. Consequently, they, um, they feed the ecosystem with material that's just partially, initially digested, and that allows a myriad other species then to further digest it, including uh, microorganisms in the soil. And, th and this greatly contributes to what is called humus, which is very vital to soils. It absorbs water, releases nutrients over a longer period of time. So the truth of the matter is, is that this greatly bolsters or enhances the uh, native ecosystem and also many more seeds of many more uh, species of plants are able to pass intact 
and capable of germination. And this is a major factor, and this can result in the benefit to many species of birds and rodents and lizards and plants, of course. Their nature is to spread out their grazing pressure. That's why they're so mobile, why they have those long legs and can move about so quickly. Their nature is not to camp on the riparian. It's to spread out over vast areas and then come in and, and drink. And they shouldn't be fenced in and concentrated, you know, in, in just one little area along a river. They should be allowed to go out and spread out over the, the vast areas where they will enhance the ecosystem. We're beginning uh, to enter the area where um, Arizona's last wild horses uh, occur. Maybe there's just a couple hundred left here, uh, that's what I gather. So I'll be doing ecological transects today to um, see what the, how the condition of the ecosystem is based on a scientific meth methodology, um, a handbook for range uh, monitoring that I that I have studied and employed as an ecologist. The animals are trying to harmonize and fill their their beautiful place in nature, but people come around with their narrow-minded ideas and prevent them from doing that. The horses are are so important here to the history because. They did the grueling, back-breaking work and also showed a lot of intelligence and patience. Now they helped, were major elements in constructing the dam and in building the uh, Apache Trail, which is this highway we're on now. It's, it's unpaved, but that was grueling work. They had to dynamite rocks, haul rocks out. They had to haul the parts for the turbines up. and. Um, you know, we just owe everything to the horse. We wouldn't be where we are today without these magnificent horses. So the best way to repay them is to give them a place to live, to be themselves in the land of their ancestry, of their evolutionary origin. It's just everything's right about us, and they do restore ecosystems. They also greatly munch down dry, flammable vegetation and prevent catastrophic wildfires. Burrows also do the same thing. I grew up on a horse, Poco, and I realized these are these are highly evolved uh, beings, the horses, and this is their world. They're an ancient ancient presence that has evolved much longer than mankind on this earth. They have a tremendous wisdom. Mankind should learn to share the earth as home with these marvelous uh, presences, the horses, and same thing for the burrows. It's just everything that's morally right and, and also ecologically right. They can help save life on Earth. Wild horses are much more positive in their impacts than they are negative, and that a wild horse containing ecosystem is a, a positive thing. You know, it's just just not right to uh, single out one for persecution. Uh, one very beautiful species that um, evolved here. Their their roots are here. Their fossils are here. They're one of the most ancient presences here, and the fossil record attests to that as well as genetic uh, analyses. So uh, we're going to do right that we have to be on top of this issue. We can't just think that well, these public officials are going to do what's right. It's up to the public. We have to maintain a keen awareness of what's going on with these wonderful wild horses and not let them be set up for elimination. I'd like to say a word about getting humanity back in harmony with nature. I think it's absolutely essential. So many tendencies today, population growth, pollution, depletion of ozone, um, concentration of carbon dioxide, methane, for, uh, destruction of forests and coral reefs are extremely alarming. This uh, terrible situation calls for radical changes in the human lifestyle.
and we really have to learn to practice uh, true reverence for life. You know, uh, uh, our, the plants and animals aren't just enemies that are to be overcome. They're our companions, and we all help each other to survive. Learning to have regard for the great spiritual essence of all of life, and I'm not—I'm certainly not alone in that. There, that goes back to the most ancient of cultures throughout the world. They actually are refilling a very ancient niche here in North America. Uh, fossil evidence abundantly indicates that this is their true place of uh, evolutionary origin, which goes back at least 58 million years for the entire horse family. And they do so many good things. Number one, they're, they're beautiful, highly evolved beings. And I know they eat a lot of that eel grass we saw yesterday that helps unplug the river. There are a lot of sources of pollution here that people have, have caused. There's mines, uh, settlements, various um, sewers and whatnot. Uh, but by eating that eel grass, they keep the flow going so it does not stagnate. But there are not many wild horses left here, maybe a few hundred. I think this is about the most sizable population in all of Arizona. And my um, investigations indicated that the vast majority of the wild horses in Arizona that should have been protected were in fact eliminated. So in these few places where they remain, they should, we should really draw the line in the sand, just say, no more, you're not going to take these. And I think Tonto National Forest is being more reasonable now. And they have to have full access to their rightful area here. And it should be a legal territory. That's what you call a legal area in the um, United States Forest Service. They have a, a wonderful sense of uh, how to survive, even, even in what seems to be very harsh desert conditions. They're part of our quality of life here, here on Earth. And just everything that's right about about them being here. But most of them end up being hauled off over to Mexico or Canada to be um, maintained in hellish uh, little corrals until they're, they're horribly slaughtered. Many times they're butchered alive, skinned alive in Mexico. How, how could we do this to such a sensitive and highly evolved animal. Now, one group that's proven this is animals, angels. They've tracked them. We can't allow this to happen. You know, this is just uh, devilish. And, and we've got to stop. We've got to stand up for what's right. So I would greatly appreciate your help. Go on my website. It's thewildhorseconspiracy.com and get my book, The Wild Horse Conspiracy by Craig C. Downer. It's also an e-book. And uh, together we can turn things around and learn to live in harmony uh, with these wonderful animals. Thank you. Maverick Mustangs of the Salt River with Craig C. Downer of The Wild Horse Conspiracy and Tom Porter of Animal Consciousness. Save the Canadian and U.S. wild horses. Wild horses rightfully deserve and need our help. 